Hello everyone, uh, this is Paul from the APN Academy. So uh, we're still continuing with our series where we're going to be showing you guys how we break down the market live using exactly what we have taught you guys on this channel ever since we started posting. So today we're looking at uh, Volatility 75. It's a synthetic index. As usual, if you don't have an account, make sure you get an, a demo account uh, with the link in the description so that you can trade synthetic indices. Uh, make sure you go slow on them and make sure you're very cautious and you use proper risk management. Train yourself to be patient and how to implement your rules and risk management when you're trading synthetic indices because they are very, very volatile, right? So uh, now uh, we're going to start from monthly. I will just keep reminding you guys, whenever you're doing top-down analysis, as long as you're following this channel, you have to start from the monthly time frame to give us the direction, right? Then uh, we go to the weekly time frame to give us the swing structure, which is the first structure. Then we shall go down to the daily uh, time frame to give us the second structure, which we, shall be, which we shall be using in intraday trading, and also scalpers can use it, right? So these are the three time frames we use. We have to make sure that they're all communicating the same thing before we can uh, choose which one to go with, right? So uh, without wasting time, um, let's just uh, get our let's, let's just get uh, straight into it with the monthly. Now, starting from monthly, what we observe, we talked about momentum. If I can observe the momentum here is not good, right? We have uh, one seller occupying all these buyers, meaning that the buyers don't have strength to go up, right? Then uh, also another confluence. Remember, trading is all about confluence, right? Another confluence that we do observe is this uh, previous lower low here in monthly that is holding price. So meaning that they, there are higher chances the price had to be rejected. So these are two factors that we're looking at that suggest the price should at least be a dropping down. Not very down, but at least should give us a sell. Remember, we're using monthly strictly for sales, right? So we have here two things, uh, the previous lower low, and you know when the market is going lower low, lower low, lower high, lower low, and the market comes back here. What do we expect? We expect at least a reaction. It may, it may either give us a higher low or double bottoms or even a, a lower low. We don't know yet, but what we want to know is the direction. What's the direction? The direction that has been given to us is a sell. So when I go down to weekly, I know that I'm looking for a sell, right? Now also weekly, what we observe, in weekly we do observe this impulsive move, correction, and then we push down. Now let's check where we're supposed to correct from. Of course, whenever you go to the next lower time frame, uh, make sure you uh, you are adjusting your levels. So, so if you can adjust this one, you can see it aligns perfect to the one weekly. The next thing we are going to do is this impulse here. Now, whenever there's an impulse, what do you do? You bring out your Fibonacci retracement tool, and then you draw it from where the impulse started to where it stopped, right? And you can check one of the fib levels is nicely confluencing with this same area here, meaning we had to look for sales from here and then we push down, right? But remember. We are looking for uh, the current price. Don't worry, someone may be saying, but this one already happened. Yeah, I know most of you missed the sale from here. So what next? Now, if I sort to look at that, yes, we touched the FIB level and we expect to push down. But in the process of touching this area here, we created an M. Do you guys see this? I told you guys, if you cannot see an M, what do you do? Make sure you go to the line chart. So I'll go to line chart and you can see this neckline here. So... Uh, having seen that uh, neckline, what next? We want to see where the neckline is. So the neckline of this neckline uh, of this M here is exactly in this area here, right? So I'll just mark it like this. If you want, you can mark this whole area here, and you can clearly see the market has come to retest. We know that after an M is created, we want the neckline retested, then we can push down. So so far, you can clearly see that monthly, uh, weekly, and the daily are suggesting uh, sorry, monthly and weekly so far suggesting for us to sell, right? Now let's drop down to daily and we observe what can we see. Now this is the level that I've marked. In Now in daily, you can see that we so far have a market that was pushing up to retest this area. But in the process, we have higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low here, higher high, higher low. So when the market broke this area here with an M, this is a confirmation that we are looking for sales. So further also, in case you're using the daily time frame, we know that this whole area here, this whole area here is a, a resistance to us here. Or even if you want, you can mark from here. But now, having touched this area here, we know that this is a weekly level and this is a daily level. I can just change the color to red to differentiate it uh, from the other one. We know that this color, I'll change also this one to blue to differentiate that is a weekly uh, area. So I'll just differentiate it here like this. The blue one is uh, weekly, the red one is. But we can clearly see that we have touched the red one when we're pushing down. And what do we say? Weekly, we use H4. Daily, we use H1. So when you want to look for entries, this is your entry for the swinger who is looking for more pips and if you're looking for intraday this is your entry here for for the intraday guys and the scalpers who are looking to be in the market for a short time but what where do we look for entries from and change of trend we have done a breakdown if you have to look clearly at your chart very clean chart not dirty no indicators that are confusing you you just have a marking here with proper confluences 
you have this marking and this one here. How many markings? One, two, three. You can delete this other one if you want because they're all in the same area. But we just have only three markings and you exactly know where the market is going, right? So someone may be saying, where do I expect the market to go? You can use the, uh, the previous higher highs and higher lows as your targets, but in bigger time frames, not in small time frames. Now, where do you check the change of trend from? You go to H4. Look at H4. The market was creating higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. And then it started creating a pattern while approaching this area here. Now, someone may be saying, I don't see the pattern. The pattern is simply just a trend line here. You can see this. And then, sorry. And then also we have this downward trend line here to create a pattern like this. So you can see this was a, a nice uh, approach. And you know that it's not, do not cram, but you know that when the market is approaching a, a resistance with a rising wedge, you know that the higher chances you could expect a push down. That was one side. Then you can go further and refine it. Maybe in your H1 to check this is a triple top. We have also a market breaking down of the neckline here and retesting it, false breakout, retesting it. I taught you guys how to take entries uh, with false breakout. This was your entry here. Then also uh, uh, when you come to H1, another opportunity was here whereby someone could have refined here on this retest here. We could have taken an entry here, but this is all history. Now, what about if I missed my, I missed this trade here? What do I want to see? I want to see a weak retest, which the market is already doing. Now, when the market gives us a ret weak retest, either into this area or into this area, or even into this area here, you can mark it. Then when it gives us a weak retest, a weak push up there, what we're interested in is the momentum. If the momentum is weak, then we can take our, our sales further. Alternatively, we also can go back to H4 and we mark uh, this area here. You know that the market has already broken below it, right? Because this is still higher high, higher low, higher high. So the market can easily proceed up from here, right? So make sure you one, you observe momentum should be weak. And then also the market can break below and give you a weak momentum here. And then you can take your trade into the next uh, level. This is how we do uh, uh, do how this is how we do top down analysis, no matter what you're trading. I've show, I've always told you that over and over again. Then matter whether you're trading cryptos, whether you're trading uh, stocks, this is how you should break down the market so that you have a wider range of view uh, in order to make a decision. Right. So if you're not subscribed, we are, we are going to be doing such breakdowns every day so that you really learn how we implement all the topics that we have been uh, posting for you on, the, on, on our channel here. We're not just posting for the purpose of posting. Maybe we don't use them. We use exactly the same things. So we'd like you guys to get used to them and, uh, and trading becomes easier for you. Maybe it would help you to shorten your journey to our uh, consistency. Uh, that is it for today. I hope it makes sense and you guys can utilize it.